All right, so we are looking at angles of elevation and depression. And these, what we're doing now is we're going to be setting up triangles, but we're going to be using like scenarios. And when you talk about elevation and depression, it's setting up the scenario and giving us information about you know the scenario so that we can calculate or find the triangle the biggest um thing to look out for is that the angle of elevation and the depression is measured from that horizontal so where it is this is so there's the horizontal line so you'll often hear them call that's the horizontal line there and the angle is moving up from the horizontal line so angle of elevation is always done really well, but it's this angle of depression that's really people pick the wrong um, angle. So it's from the horizontal line again. So that's the horizontal line. So it's from that line down to that. So you can see we've got the, we've got the balloon and then we've got the boat. And so the line that joins those two objects together, that's like we say the line of sight. So it's that line and the line with the horizontal line. Okay, so often, I'm just going to show you because this is often what is um, incorrectly done. So if you have like, they often talk about there's the cliff or whatever, and then you have a, say a boat out at sea, whatever. So if they'll say that the angle of depression. So there's the line that joins them. So when they say the angle of depression, they are actually talking about this angle in here, like there. So that is the um, the depression angle, okay? A lot of people get um, put it in the wrong spot because we can often see that we can create this right angle triangle, but it's not that angle up here that's a different angle okay so the depression is there now we can also say that the angle of depression is equal to the angle of elevation so in this scenario if whatever this angle is there it's the same there so that's a rule we can say so when they give it to you and you're trying to set up they might say you know the boat is 200 um, meters from the cliff or whatever and then they'll say what's the height of the cliff so we're setting up um, a triangle that way, all right? So just be really careful with that. Okay, so we'll do a couple of questions. So the point Q on a building is B is visible from the point P on building A as shown in the diagram. Building A is 16 meters taller than building B. The horizontal distance between P and Q is 23 meters and they, they want to know the angle of depression um, of point Q from P. So when you've got to find the angle of depression, so remember we're going to draw the line that connects them. And remember this is the horizontal line. So they're asking me to find this. That's my question. So you can... Do it a number of ways you could probably you can if depends where you see the triangle but there's also a right angle triangle if you look like that and it's got so if i draw that triangle out we know that that's 16 meters and we can see that across there's 23 so then this is also 23 meters and in here is what they wanted me to know so then i can use once i've done that I've got a right angle triangle. I've got two sides. I want to find an angle. I could use Sokotoa. So I've got opposite over adjacent. So I'll say tan x equals um, 16 over 23. So x is going to be the inverse. Or you can use um, n solve if you like. That's fine. Up here. So you can do n solve. For these ones if you like that's fine or you can use the inverse so we get x to be 34.8 so i'm going to say closest to a 35 all right so that's what we're going to do that's elevation and depression um let's go back and do this question here 
A tree is growing near a block of land. The base of the tree is at the same level as the corners P and S. Okay, so um, show the correct to two decimal places that ST is 41.81 um, meters. So here we've got, um, we've got a, a triangle that's not a right angle triangle. And we've been given two angles and they want me to show ST. So pretty much they're showing, want me to find this and this side here. And they're giving me the answer, so I need to set it up. So if you think about what we have been doing, if we had A, B, C, we could, um, and this would be little a, little b, little c, because we've got um, two angles, and we've got, we're trying to find a side, we're gonna use the sine rule here. So I'm gonna, and because I've got both, I need A, so I'll use that, the sine A part. And I have, I have side C, so I'm gonna use sine C, but I don't have this angle, but I can work this one out, because this one would be 180, because that's how many, degrees there are in a triangle minus the other two added together so what does that equal okay so that's 61 degrees beautiful so if I pop all this in I will have x over sine 47 equals um, 50 over sine 61 Okay, now because they want us to show, this is how they're getting around that you can't use the solve function. So we just want x by itself because you want to show because that's what st is. So because this got this number down, this is timesing. If you move it over, it will multi dividing. Sorry, it'll if you move it over, it'll be multiplying. So I could say that x um, equals and it'll be 50 times the sine 47 divided by sine 61 and you can just write that it equals what they said there all right so um that's the way of showing okay from the point s the angle of elevation to the top of the tree so this is why i've done this so from point s the angle of elevation to the tree so they gave so what you've got to think about it is that you've got you've got s along the ground and then you've got the bottom of the tree along the ground as well and you just they just asked you to prove that that was 41.81 meters so we'll do that now they said um, from the point s the angle of elevation to the top of the tree so if we had this little tree here the angle of elevation to the top of the tree is 22 degrees okay and it's asking me calculate the height of the tree correct um, answering meters correct to one to one decimal place sorry so if you look here we could label it we've got a right angle triangle and I've got opposite and I've got adjacent so I could use 10 22 equals h over 41.81 and you can find what um you can use solve if you like and find out what that is so i'm just going to do that on the calculator time all right so i get h to equal 16 it said one decimal place so I get it to be 16.9 meters. So that's where that one was. I wasn't sure if that had a bearing question. So that's why I left it for now. Okay, sorry, I think that question, we might just talk about bearings first. Okay, so with um, bearings, bearings gives us a way of like pointing in directions. So if they say cardinal direction, they say um, north, south, east, and west. So what your main thing you need to know is that when you have, you have your compass and if you've got north, east, um, south, and west, 
And you've got to know if they say, you know, someone starts, generally you have a starting point, And if they say they went directly east, you've got to know that in there is like obviously 90 degrees. So if you're between direct north and direct east is 90 degrees. So you'll see like that. So what they're most likely going to do is mainly talk about in these compass bearings. So the compass bearings will always tell you, first of all, whether you are in the north or you're in the south. So you can see here, they told me I was in the north. So I know I'm at the north. And then the next part of the um, the bearing will tell you which way you're swinging from that. So from north, I'm going 30 degrees towards east. So you can see that would be 30 degrees in there. So if say there was a person out there, that's where they are. Okay, so if I had... If I did another one, if I said, um, so we've got one here, south 20 degrees. So I've started in the south and it's going towards west. So it's from the south going towards west. That makes that 20 degrees in there. Okay, so that's a compass bearing. So a compass bearing is when you have the north and the south and then which way you're going east or west. Um, the true bearings is when you have a so it's three digits okay so you've got to make sure you've got three digits and it's always three digits and you're always starting at north and you're obviously going around that way so what do i mean by that so you're at the comp you've got your compass and you start at north and they're going to say how far you go around so say if i drew a line out here and I said that was um, 120 degrees true. Well, I know that this is 90. So I actually know that this little angle in there is 30 because I've gone 120 from north. All right. So just take note when they said this one's 65, you can see they put a zero. So if it's under 90, under, sorry, 100, you have to put a zero in front of it, so be careful. So they might put a T there, um, but generally they've just got the three digits. Uh, it's okay, as long as you've got three digits there. Don't worry about too much about it, whether you put a T for true. Okay, all right, so let's go do these bearing questions. Bearing questions, you must follow try to follow my process as much as possible because it'll make your life easier and then you won't have any troubles with these. So we're going to often draw a little compass on our points. So let's go through this question. So the road from town A runs due west for 14 kilometers. So what you do is you get, you have a starting point. So I'm just going to start my point and it's, this is town A. And when you get these bearing questions, so I always like, it's always good to draw a faint little compass on your starting, on, on each point really. So I'm just gonna do north. And it says, cause then it says, um, a town A runs due west for 14 kilometers to town B. So I go along the, due west means you're right on the, on the west um, axis and you get to point B. And once you get to another point, just always good to put a little compass in so that you can see, it's mainly so you can see parallel lines and things like that. Now, we're gonna pop in that that's 14 kilometers. Okay, it says a television mast, so it's sort of like a pole or whatever, is located due south of B at a distance of 20 three kilometers. So I'm going south along the B and because it's 23, just try to draw it a little bit bigger than the 14 kilometers because sometimes when you, even though you're doing a sketch, if you're a little bit off, it can, um, it can deceive you. So I'm going to do that and I'm going to do my compass so that I can understand where that is on the due south line. And I'm just going to put that's um, the TV, whatever that is, TV mask thing. Okay, so it says draw a diagram and calculate the distance 
of the mass from the town centre A. So in the end, the question is calculate this distance. So hopefully you can see you've created a right angle triangle there. And we've got two sides and we're missing another side. So because it's a right angle, um, I can say that I can use Pythagoras. So I'm going to use Pythagoras. So this is my H and this might be A and this might be B where I say H squared equals A squared plus B squared. Um, so I can, and then I'll pop that in. So X squared equals 14 squared plus 23 squared. And we can just use solve in that comma x and we can find what the distance is so find the distance that's what we've first done it said to the nearest kilometer so i just have to round to the nearest whole number it was 26.9 so i'm going to say the distance you know um so calculate to the nearest kilometer so we're going to say 27 kilometers from mast to town A. Okay, now the next thing it's asking me is here, we are asked, find the bearing of the mast from the, the town. So what that means, when you look, when you see these words from the center of the town, that's where you're starting your bearing from. So the, where the word from, this is where you're starting um, the bearing. So they're talking about the town centre. So I'm going to start from its north line and I want to go all the way around to I hit that, um, the line that's joining the two things that we're talking about together. So if you have a look, we know that from, um, so we know that at least from here to here, we can see that's 180, okay? So, but we still got to add in this extra bit, um, which I might just call in here. I still got to add that, I'll call it Y, this angle Y to the, so 180 plus the Y will give me the bearing, the total bearing from north. Okay, the tr total true bearing, I should say. Okay, so what we're going to do is we need to find out that angle. So there's a couple of ways you can do it. We could, we know we can see that it's um, 90 degrees in there. So if we use our little triangle, so I'm going to use this triangle where I've got 14, 23, and it's a right angle. If I find out this I'll call it Z, Z in there. Well, I know that 90 minus Z is going to equal that Y bit. So I'll go again and I'll use, um, I might, I've got opposite and adjacent. So I'll use tan. So tan Z equals 23 over 14. <coughs> so Z equals... So you can use solve or you can do inverse, whichever way you want to do it, that's fine. Um, Wait, this is a 23 over 14. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Yep, is that all right? So I get Z to be, I'm going to round to the nearest degree, so 59. So therefore, 90 minus 59 equals 31 degrees which would be um which is x oh sorry we called that y so therefore we know so therefore the bearing is equal to the 180 so that was that first part of the straight line there up to here plus the 31 so we get um, it to be 111 degrees true. Or I could say, if I wanted to do a compass bearing, I could say we were where it is. Um, 
you could say you're at the south. Oh, sorry. I said it. South. So you're down here at the south and you're moving um, Y, which is 31 degrees towards the west. Okay. So it's up to you. Probably true bearings is the easiest one to just do. Just wipe the full circle around how far away you are. All right, All let's right. do another one. So we're going to look at this question. And so I've a yacht starts from ready point A and sails so on a bearing of So it said a yacht starts from point A and sails on now, a bearing Now I've got the diagram of, there, um, but I'm going to show you degrees for three um, thousand meters to do it. So you can see I've started that it the way down said, here, so and I draw. So my, I'm going to um, say compass. Um, so we've got this um, point A bearings on my A as well. So it's really good we're going to put a compass to do that. And then on there, it, when they're talking about so it went out on and they said that it sails on a bearing of degrees 38 for three, out to another point. Um, so meters. you can see here, so I'm 38 would be in those some pieces of data here. just so, so I can see found out um, that different that's points as I go along. There. Okay, it and then changed to, and went and on a bearing 3, of 318 meters, and that's where I do. for so it gets to um, a point 3, there. Meters. It says once it's at that point, it alters its. Is where it's traveling I've um, so we'll draw a little compass I'm showed you in the pink okay the, and it, this is the bearing, bearing of 318, 318 so from and the north sail, line all the way and around. after sailing so when uh, I do 3, that I can work meters, it reaches out B. a few so things uh, 318 now, that would this, be remember 52 that in this there. line around there this would be 52 down in there that so was found by going somewhere out 90 minus the 38 thrust. and I'm because there's a right angle 3, triangle in there and that's how I meters. found the 52. Now, pop in the pieces okay, of information so right that angle triangle. So what they said here with when this it was 48 here, know all the I way found around that by going 318. But there's little uh, bits that you can see because if it's to the 270 to the west line, then and that's you know how I found that this that is um in there 48 all right so i found those 318 and then we went up to b and then it 48 the question part so a was to find the distance between no um, sorry a and b so i've redrawn the triangle how many is that 270 and um no, no, i can no, no, see that i have those two distances i've drawn a line between a and b yeah and all right I've now and then you can see you can also do 360 is minus 300 so i've used the cosine rule that's what they've put in there um, is 42 and that's okay so here. they had that bit in there so this would have been little oh, so there's C lots of I pieces want. of information so that you can find rule and i've found out now the um was it also says eight, find the and that was if we ended up meters all right so that one's not that was and so i probably hard enough but then they asked us the part b was to find the bearing so so once you do that now now it's saying find the distance AB. So we're gonna, in the end, it's always good to redraw your tri, um, your triangle. So, um, we're just redrawing it in a bit more simplistic. Um, so we're calling that B. This is A, and because we had this other corner, they're calling that C, and we knew this was three hundred, three thousand, sorry, three hundred, and this one was three thousand. And we've got to look at what we um, know. So what we've drawn is we've actually drawn them up like that. So we can find this angle in here. We can see that. We know this, we've got 48 in there, but we can also find this bit, this little angle in there. And the way I'm doing that is I can see that there are parallel lines with these north lines. So I've got a parallel line, and then when I have an intersecting line, yeah, if this is 38 in here, then this bit in here is also 38. Now, I've got like 90 degrees in there, so I can see that 90 minus 38, so this bit in here is 90, minus the 38, which is going to equal 52. So I've pretty much found out that this angle, the total angle in there is the 52 plus the 48 that I found before. So we've got, um, what have we got? It's a hundred. So I know that that 
angle C is 100. I'll just write it in black. Oh, you can't see that. 100 degrees. Okay, so now find the distance AB. Um, you could use the cosine rule because AB is little c. And so off you go and you could type that in and I could say C equals using the cosine rule. It'll be A squared plus B squared, which was this, minus two, um, I can't fit it in, but cos 100, okay? So that's how you'll find AB. Okay, the next bit is find the bearing of B from A. So what it means is I want to start at my A, north, where's A? And I want to go from its north line all the way until I hit, um, till I hit the where it joins up, okay? So we can see in here uh, that red line. So there we can find that between... We need to find out this angle in here, which is, hmm, I'll do it another color. Um, I'll call it Z. And Z's in, it's not the 38, Z's that one in between the line and here. That's Z. Okay, so you're going to have to find that one. This one's getting a bit messy. I might pause it here. Um, I've squashed it up a bit too much, and I think my diagram's a bit false if I'm looking at theirs. This one's a hard one because if you haven't drawn it up, I'll draw it up better and I'll um, do it page. So to find the bearings, I've left my original diagram there. And you can see it's ever so, because if you try to do your best scaling diagram, because we saw before, it didn't show for me that um, this line was on the outside. I had mine inside the north line. So it's actually on the outside. So try to do, sometimes these can be a bit deceiving. So what they want, so it wants the bearing of B from A. So when it says from A, that means I've got to start at A's north line. So you can see I've started in the highlight up here at the north line and I go round till I hit the line that joins them together. So that would be the bearing. So I need to find out a few things. So I've like sort of blown or focused in on the scenario up here. So I can see that obviously the bearing is going to be this around to here. So I've worked out if I find that angle A in my tr big triangle ABC, and then I minus that 38. It's going to give me that little green dot in there, which is going to tell me, which I can see it's that far off the north line. So this is why down here in the final answer, I'm, I'm working out that the bearing um, for this, the bearing must be 360 minus that green dot because that's how far it goes all the way around. Okay, so there's a few things I've got to find. I need to find angle A. So I've gone off and used the sine rule for that because I've got um, I've got side A and and I want angle A, so I'll use that. And I've got um, angle C, and I just found in the previous question um, side C, so I'll use that. So just like with our sine runs we did the other day, I popped it in with the solve but set the um put this set the function so it can only be between 0 and 180 so we need to do this with the sine rule and we have a look at it and we can see a anyway it's not a big angle so it's definitely 42 but this one would not be right because if I add 100 to that we're already over 100 because we've got 101 we're over 180 so that one can't be a possibility anyway so it's definitely 42 and so we've found what A is. So then I can see that that green dot would be 42 minus the 38 because we saw that little distance from the north to the line joining A and C was 38. 
So in the end, I find the green dot was um, four degrees and I can then minus 360 from that. So the true bearing, um, sorry, you can't quite see. Yeah, sorry, if I move that up, the true bearing was 356. So this one was a little bit hard, but you definitely have got to be careful with your diagrams. All right, so two hikers, Anton and Beth, walk in different directions from the same camp. All right, so we might want to start that we've got a camp and we'll put our compass on because they're obviously going to go in directions. We've heard that. And so here I've got my camp. Um, it says Beth walks 12 kilometers on a bearing of 135. So I'm going to go out here because that's 135 and this would be where Beth ends up and straight away I draw my little compass and I'm going to add in the pieces of information that we were given. So we know that this is um, 135. So there's things that you know if that's 90 then in here um, this little distance in here must be 45. Okay, so you can work out little bits and pieces and obviously they did tell us that it was 12. So we'll pop that in there. Okay, now Anton walks from camp on a six degrees um, on a bearing of 45. So Anton's gone out 45, which is this way. And sorry, and he only went for six kilometers. So, so we don't have what happened before. I should probably make my line a bit smaller because it's only six kilometers, okay? And so, and this is where Anton ends up. And I might just draw a little compass on him so I can see. Now, they told me that this to there was 45 degrees. So I can see too that in there must be also 45 because it's gonna make up um, 90 degrees. I mean, yeah, so between this north and the east line. So on what bearing should Anton walk from the lookout tower, because that's where he is, to meet Beth? So what you're doing is you've got to join the two together. So we're joining um, Anton and Beth. And it's Anton needs to, on um, what bearing should Anton walk from the lookout tower to meet Beth. So it's from Anton. So the question is actually, this is the bearing, That how much is that gonna go there? So you can see what we've got, if I blew that up a little bit, we can see there's things that we have, information that we have. We've got that, we know that this in here is 45 as well and because of um, parallel lines so that's because I'm seeing a pa parallel line here with the two north lines there so I know if um, to here is 45 then the opposite way is 45 so you can see if I found um, if I found angle A of the triangle. So if I just redrew that triangle a little bit simpler. So we've got 6, 12, and this is what we're drawing. We've got A and B, and we call that C. Okay, if I found this angle in here, so that's pretty much angle A. If I found A and minus 45 degrees, because of why am I minusing 45? Because in there I can see there's a little bit. So if I minus that 45, I'm gonna see how far off that south line, I'm gonna find out this angle in here, okay? So it's gonna equal that little angle in there. I'll just, give, I'm giving it a little purple dot. So what I'm going to do is I'll use this triangle. Let's find out what angle A is. So I might use um, the sine rule again. 
because we do and we do know or actually we need another angle to find out so let's look at C I knew that this bit was 45 and this is 45 so I actually worked out that that's 90 so this is a right angle triangle so we could easily find out A by just using um, tan in this case because it's a right angle 90 so if I go tan um, A equals 12 over 6 and I find out what tan is just gonna do that one um, so I get angle to be A to be equal 63 degrees so now I know so 63 so A equals 63 so 63 minus the 45 would be um, 18. So I know that that purple dot in there, this purple dot is 18. Okay, the purple dot. So therefore the bearing is going to be, so it's not quite 180, it's 180 minus that 18. So it's going to be 162 degrees true and that's how we find that one so they get a bit tough but these i'm showing you the harder ones okay to help you out and that you so you've got a diagram and you've got them in your notes so don't um too many and it's not every year so um you can maybe hope for your chances all right so let's have a look at this one the diagram shows um across it shows the route of a cross-country race and x lies due west of the point z so they gave you a compass bearing so just make sure you know so that was north and it's definitely on the west line okay and what is the bearing of the point y from point x so you want to draw your compass on x and you want from x joining to y so that's the question this is what we want in there now <clears throat> these north lines are like parallel lines and we've got an actual um and you've got to remember too that y would also have um it's uh Oh, yeah, so it'd have its north and that. But anyway, we want to find this. Now, because we know this is dead set, we know that's 90 degrees. So if I call that one X, and I might call this one in here, this distance Y, um, we could uh, see that 90 minus Y will equal X, and that's going to be my bearing okay so how do i find out why well i can see i've got 115 here and 27 so 115 plus 27 if i minus that from 180 it's going to give me this one so if i do 180 minus 115 plus 27 um we get 38 so I know this one, y equals 38. So 90 minus the 38 equals 52. So 52 degrees equals x. So what is um, the bearing? The bearing of y from x is 0, 52 degrees. Okay, so there's that one. Okay, so Aliyah is a bush is bushwalking and she walks um, 5.4 kilometers from a starting point on a bearing of 45 degrees um, until she reaches a hut. So as I said, you always should put a little compass to begin with. So she starts and she goes out at 45 degrees till she gets to a hut and we'll put a little compass in there as well. So this is the hut. And this was the start now add in the pieces of information like they said that was 45 degrees so you also know that in here is 45 degrees and maybe in there is 45 so pop that in so then from the hut she walks um on a bearing of 2.8 uh, 
for 2.8 kilometers on a bearing of 300. So 300 would be at here for 2.8 until she gets to a river. So we might pop it in. So we're going to add in the information. So you knew that all the way around to there was 300. So that means you can add in a few things um, about the bearings. So I'm just going to take that away that away we know that this um if that was around to there was 300 then this is 60 in there and we know that that is 30 in there because we've got the um <coughs> the west line there so you've worked out and then it says she returns from she was up there at the river and she returns and walks back to the starting point and it says um the total distance so we're probably going to know, we know if we look at, just simplify our triangle out here, we know this was 5.8 and, oh sorry, 5.4 and we know that this was 2.8 and we've actually found this angle in here. If you add those two together, we've got that 75 and we need to find out this distance here. So this is where I'm going to use if I um, labeled it up, I could use the cosine rule. So the cosine rule would be <coughs> x equals the square root of the two sides squared. You add them together, minus two times um, those sides times cos the angle in between, which was 75. So if we do that, we get um, 5.4, okay? So then if you add all those um, together, you get 5.4 uh, plus 5.4 plus 2.8. So you get... Um, you get 13.6, so we get that in total if we add them all. So that was 5.4 plus 5.4 plus 2.8. Okay. Okay, this next one. The course of a yacht race is in a triangular um, shape and marked out by the buoys, the T, U, and V. The starting buoy T sails on a bearing of 30. So... Um, they probably not like extending it up as much as we might like to do. So um, we've got that. So it goes at 30 to buoy U. Um, from the buoy U, the yacht sails to buoy V and then to buoy T. The angle of U, T, V is 69. So they gave you that and they gave you the angle of the other one, 47. The bearing of the boy U, now they're saying from boy V. So that means you start at boy V's north line and you're going to go from that north line all the way to the line that joins U. Okay? So you have um, a few things in here. So you can see that we, down to this line, down to this bit would be 180. So really what I need, and I, I've got this bit's 47, so I probably need this line in here, this angle in there. Now, if we have a look, they told us we've got, um, this is like a north line coming up here, two north lines, and then you've got the line that's joining T and V. So we actually can see that this angle from there to there would be the 67, oh, sorry, the 69 plus the 30. So this would actually be 99. Now, if that's 99, then this bit from here to here is 99 because we know parallel lines. If you have parallel lines and a line intersecting, if that angle is 99, then this angle is 99, okay? So we can work out the bearing is therefore... 180 plus that 99 plus the 47 so we've got to add we know this is bits 99 but we have to add the 47 as well so we can get that full loop around so we get 
47 plus 99 plus 180. So we get 326, which is that one. Okay, Melissa flies 75 kilometers on a bearing of 204. So let's start her off. So this is the start. And I'm going to pop in my compass. And she flies um, 204. So that would be at here um, for 50 kilometers. So I've got that's 50 kilometers. Um, and I'm going to pop in a compass bearing on where she is so we saw that was 204 so really what we're saying from here around to here was 204 so we can find out other things we know to the straight line is 180 so um in here must be uh 24 degrees from here to here if you know that is 24 degrees you also know that that's 24 degrees just handy to pop these things in probably going to come in handy all right she then when she gets to this second point she goes on a bearing of 150 oh sorry this was this first distance was 75 sorry am i wrong and then so she goes then on a bearing of for 50 kilometers on 150 so i'm gonna say that's out here for 50 kilometers and she gets to her next point okay so let's pop in what we were told there we were told from here to here was 150 okay so that was 150 so what else can we see we know in here is 90 so then that makes this one in here 60 degrees okay and then also if we know we have um, 90. Okay, so we see that in here, because it's adding up to 90, and right, right angle, this must be 66, because 90 minus 24 is 66 degrees. So back to the question, the question's asking us to find the distance from the starting point. So if we join these two up here, that's what we want. So let's go simplify our triangle a little bit because we've got a lot of information and we just want to get it to be more a bit more simpler so I know that this is 50 this is 75 and I now can see this angle in here if I add 66 and um, 60 I get 126 degrees and obviously X is the question so if I label this triangle up like my ABC it'd be little c that we want and if we went through our flow chart it says um do we have right angle triangle no do we have more than one angle no so we'd be using the cosine rule so the cosine rule for little if we're trying to find little a will be the square root of b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a so if we substitute that information in b is 50 plus 75 squared minus 2 times 50 times 75 times cos 126 and we get approximately 112 so C okay so triangulation is the method of triangles um, used to solve some theory problems so often we see um, if you're a surveyor and that they might have where they want to measure this distance across say across a lake like that as you can see there's a lake there so they can't physically walk through the lake to get from you know measuring with a you know a measuring tape or whatever and so what they do is you'll often see those surveyors so they you know they take two points so here they might have they've marked on um, a and c and they've put the you know those um, sticks up with the radars and then they've got a point on the other side of the lake and then they link it up and they find these angles of um, degrees between the straight lines between them and then they can calculate distances because they can get here and they can get here and they can get here outside of the lake but if they want a direct distance so say here they um, the question was to find a B the um, direct path so a B if we use their little triangle would be little C and we've been given little b 
so we probably are going to have to use we know we have to use signed C in our thing um, because if we went through our flow chart we've got how do we have a right angle triangle no do we have more than one angle yes we're using the sine rule now I've been given B so I'm probably gonna be using that too but if you look I don't have B's angle but that one can be found out because we know this is 55 this is 65 this one would have to be 180 minus those two added together so we end up with this is 60 and that's how they get that and then we can just plug in all our information that we know which would be there um, equals b um, 100 over sine 60 okay and then we can just use solve on our calculator so we're used to just doing solve comma c and we'll end up with their answer that they got there okay so here's an example of triangulation so we've got marcus opposite the lake and from a horse and a stable and the stable is 150 meters directly east so we probably want to pop in um, a bit of our compass so we can see what's happening so they're saying it's directly east along here and we've got 150 okay now Marcus is on a bearing of 170 from the horse so that means we start at the north thing uh, north of the horse the north line on the horse and we join it to the the line joining Marcus and the horse so they're saying that's 170 degrees so we can see a few things we know that's 90 so it makes in here must be um, 80 degrees so we know that and then the next bit of information it says um, Marcus is on a bearing of 205 from the stable so you go to stables north and it'd be all the way around there that's 205 now we've got to remember that directly down round to the west line is 270 so we can find out that this in here must be 65 because 270 minus the 205 um, is 65. All right, so the question, the straight line distance between Marcus and the horse, that's here. So let's draw our triangle out with a lot less um, mess and see what we've got. So we've got 80, we've got 65, got 150 and we've got um, X all right so if we go through our flow chart do we have a right angle no do we have more than one angle yes so we're using the sine rule so if I just label up the sine rule um, I've going to I have to use C because that's the question this is little C this is little A and this is little B so I'm gonna have to use C the C in my combination and I'm gonna use A because they gave me side A okay we need to find this angle so that is going to be 180 minus these two which is going to be um, 35 degrees so then we can plot in everything we know so sine 65 equals 150 over sine um, 35 and we're just gonna pop in solve comma C and we get E um, C equals 237 okay this next this question 10 I've done on a separate video it's from the 2020 exam and a big one so it's a separate video